Midjourney is a text-based AI image generation software that can be incredibly complex, but incredibly fruitful. I haven't seen a video out there yet that goes in depth about its architectural applications, along with its settings and how to use it. But today I wanted to make a video for you guys on how to master Midjourney in the new year. So without further ado, here's the ultimate guide. And for time's sake, I'm gonna assume you already linked Midjourney to your Discord, so we can just jump right into it. To access the settings in Midjourney, just do a slash and type in the word settings. Here you can see that Midjourney, on the first line, they have multiple options for your rendering, labeled one through four. So think of this about the same way you think of passes in your architectural rendering. So pass one, for instance, has lower level of detail. It takes a little bit quicker and the results are fine. But if you want a more refined version of your output from Midjourney, you would want to opt for either level three or level four. Niji mode is another method and it's a collaboration between Midjourney and Spellbrush. So it's more of an anime illustrative kind of style. I personally recommend just staying within type three and type four. It goes through the most iterations and it produces really high quality stuff. And basically to start image generation, all you have to do is do a backslash imagine and type in your prompt. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm using the same prompt for all of the setting explanation and we'll get more creative later on. We have this prompt here and you may be wondering what all of the V1, U1, U4, what's what. So here is the grid. It goes one, two, three, four. And you can either upgrade or upscale or you could make variations. And that's what the V stands for. So variations of the image number two will produce similar images to two and kind of run the whole prompt again with that in mind. The next feature I wanted to talk about was the remix and this really comes into play with what I was previously mentioning about variations. Midjourney allows you to really explore variations of one of its outputs using something called a remix. It allows you to change the prompts parameters, model versions, and so on between your variations of generations. Remixing helps you change the settings or lighting of an image. If you want to change the subject or achieve a tricky composition, use the remix mode. To enable that, you just backslash settings, you click on remix. The remix prompt will come up and you can continue to make variations. And you can run this as many times as you want. This is great because architects are very finicky and specific and we want things to look right and proper. So definitely explore options with the remix mode. Next, I wanted to talk about the style parameter for your jobs. When you input this into your settings, you can see the numbers changing depending on how low or how very high it is. Style doesn't actually mean that your render, your output doesn't come out as a nice render. It just means how far does the AI interpret your words or stylize it in a certain fashion. And there are three options for upscaling your image. We have regular light upscale and then beta upscale. All of these relate to increasing your image resolution size. Quality is pretty self-explanatory. I always opt for half quality. It just seems to be a little bit faster. High quality costs double the credit you have. Fast mode and relaxed mode is pretty self-explanatory as well. It will take longer in relaxed mode. Last thing to mention is public mode and private mode. If you opt to be in private mode, it will not be shared on your profile or it will never reach the community page on Midjourney's website. Those are all the settings. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. There are so many applications in the architectural field and I know some will argue with me but I find that anyone who really pushes against how people are going, how people are embracing tech are actually met with a lot of pushback and sometimes it's inevitable the way we progress there was a lot of pushback on computers but now the average household owns three so <laughs> so it just becomes this this debate right should you as an architect use it should you steal it now in terms of copyright which i know you might be curious on midjourney's website it states that you as the individual as the prompter have full rights to use this um last time i checked so we will see if this actually changes in the near future i'll link everything down below the more you get comfortable in exploring the prompts of midjourney the more sophisticated your outputs from midjourney will be so please you know spend some time with it and now i want 
wanted to talk about its architectural applications. I know I definitely have my struggles and my faults in architecture. Sometimes school tries to make you, the student, so well-rounded, but it is really hard to achieve that um, because everyone has weaknesses, right? So one of my weaknesses in architecture is form making. I always want to start off with a box, but you know, that's very limiting, but other people are a lot better at form explorations and stuff where I can be a little bit more rigid. I, for instance, have been trying to use Mid Journey for my thesis in exploring some types of architectural forms or elements of components coming together. And you can use what Mid Journey kind of spits out at you to further develop your own style. But I think it's a good exercise to use and integrate Mid Journey into your workflows. Or if you need a new rendering style, for instance, too, it also spits out really wonderful architectural renderings. Some concerns I have is um, will Mid Journey slowly make architecture obsolete? Because now maybe all you need to do is spit out a couple renderings on a couple sides. I, I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of technology that is slowly becoming automated in the architecture industry. So I guess all we have to do is sit, sit back and see where tech is going to take us in the future. So let me know what you guys think down below and what are your opinions on AI image generations? I think there are wonderful opportunities, but at the same time, I'm a little bit scared to see where AI will take us and I'm sure a lot of people kind of feel how I feel but um, yeah so anyway let me know what you guys think of mid journey down below I will see you guys in the next video love you guys